Hi friends, this is Lisa from Life with Fife, a podcast where I talk about life, knitting, creativity, spirituality, and how all of those thin things, all those elements intersect to help make a more meaningful and happy life. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, I hope that you will like and subscribe here and follow me as well on Instagram, Life with Fife. So today I'm going to be talking about life and knitting. Um, and I, you know, spent some time recently going over my budget. I keep a budget and I keep a knitting budget and I went over my knitting budget and I realized that since I have made the decision to stop buying yarns that are acrylic or superwash or impulse buys, I have saved money. So some of those yarns are quote unquote cheap yarns. Some of them were like fancy superwash yarns that had beautiful colors. Um, however, I've really kind of just stuck to my guns. And as an example, I just today came back from Will, uh, Wing and a Prayer Farms in Shaftesbury, from Shaftesbury, Vermont. And I purchased some of Tammy White, who is a shepherdess, a local shepherdess and farmer um, and hand dyer. She makes beautiful wools. They're sheep wools, but they are dyed 100% with plants. So it's amazing that she's able to get the richness and depth of color um, from plants here, but I just love this gold and I think it's absolutely gorgeous and it's something that I will absolutely be using this season. And this is all the single ladies in worsted and I have exactly the project that I'm gonna be using this for. Um, and that's actually one of my rules now. So I went from just buying yarns that seemed gorgeous to me and just exciting and bought them and said, I'll find something to do with this. I switched it around and I said, I will not buy yarn until I know exactly what I'm going to be doing with it. Um, that's rule number one. And then rule number two is that it has to fit on the knitting wall. So either I donate some yarn or I do something with a project before I can put it onto the wall. Some of this yarn up here is already being currently worked on. I just haven't used it. So I have already been, uh, I'm knitting a lot of things. My Christmas gifts are all knitted gifts this year. Um, but that also, so that's rule number two that helps to give me the structure that I need so I don't feel overwhelmed. And so here's the thing. I have mentioned before in here that knitting is a culture that is, we have Ravelry, we have everything as a visual medium where we are constantly bombarded with images of beautiful sweaters, beautiful patterns, and beautiful wools with which to knit all of these patterns. And so none of this is wrong. I mean, every designer has every, that's their obligation is right to sell the design. And they have to do that by getting it out there. And the same with the with wool wool producers, that they have to get their wools out there. They have to be seen. Um, but as a consumer, we we are kind of, it can be overwhelming. And so to, for me, how I have managed to do that is to focusing on Elizabeth Zimmerman, her skill sets and how she teaches and her recipes. So that rather than just looking at beautiful sweaters, I'm looking at skills and developing those skills. And so right now, even when I'm looking at patterns, I'm looking at patterns through the lens of, or is this a cable? Is this the kind of cable that I'm doing? What kind of shoulder is it? Is, it, is that something I wanna learn how to do? I see everything based on skills. So this just helps to rein in my desires for so many wools and patterns. And it allows me also to feel less overwhelmed because when I had, when I was just kind of like out there <laughs> just buying whatever I wanted to buy, um, I had no, no structure. I, I need structure. I need to kind of know where I'm going with something before I get started with it. Otherwise it just, it doesn't really help creativity to feel that way. So it's important to know well, what fuels your creativity and then to find, um, for me, it's a, I do love to look at patterns, but I need to have that structure to what, I'm, what it is that I'm looking at. So find out what it is that fuels your creativity and have that lens through which you're looking at things or reading about things or whatever it is that's your preferred method so that you don't overspend because it's so easy to overspend on wool and on patterns. So this is also an, an added benefit that we get when we buy wool in a more mindful fashion with a project in mind. And we, we can actually do a cost comparison um, and we can also do a value comparison. So for example, if we are looking at a superwash wool 
because we like the color of it. We can spend some time finding a natural wool. As I just showed you, there's you can find a real depth of colors in many natural plant dyed um, wools. You can also find a non-superwash wool that may have the, the most amazing color. So you can just take some time and find what it is that you're really looking for. And if it's something that speaks to you, then please do factor in the environment and the health of the planet, even though we are just knitters. We are actually quite a big demographic. When I was at Ravelry, I was amazed at how many people were there. And I thought to myself, you know, we are a, quite a large demographic. So if we all make the decision that we want that that environmentally beneficial yarns are something that we um, want, believe me, producers will respond to that. And we can choose something that is more in alignment with what we really want to put into our knitting. And for me, knitting is such a meaningful and satisfying craft because it connects me to myself, it connects me to the earth, and it connects me to other knitters. Um, and using wool that is actually beneficial for the planet only enhances that whole experience. So here's to deeply satisfying knitting. Hope you have an amazing project in the works and um, namaste.